How we doing, everybody? I've had a bad day today. Didn't dig a lot. Whoa, that fell. Trying to look around. I want to tell y'all about my root company that I had. Notice the word had. And I probably will be starting it up once again in a few years. We get our buildings paid off and stuff. Then I'll probably work out of the red building and open my business up. But anyway, I had a friend. I'm not going to mention any names because he ended up getting in trouble and doing some bad stuff. And people that don't know about it don't need to know about it, the way I look at it. And I'm sure they can Google around and find it. But anyway, let's say, I don't know, it's probably been seven, eight years ago, I guess. I was living up in Llewellyn, those of y'all that know me. Um, excuse me. Anyway, a uh, fella rolls up. My friend does. I was about to say his name. Uh, my friend rolls up, and he says, Hey, Mark. I said, Yeah. He says, Heard you thinking about opening up a root business. I said, Yeah. He says, uh, you got a way to dry and stuff? What do you got? So I took him around back, and I showed him the two. No, I had three tables at the time, screen tables for natural drying. Uh, I was using the river to wash in. Oh, wait. That was later. I took that back. The diggers had to wash it themselves. But I did have to hook something up there from the river because a lot of the diggers didn't get it cleaned. So they would have to rewash it at the house. And then I'd buy it and dry it. Well, they were supposed to pay me, I guess by the pound, I don't know. Tell me I'd make real good money well uh, he asked me how much I normally made in the woods and I told him at that time it was around 70 bucks a day you know I said except for when bark and ginseng season's in then I make over a hundred and he goes okay well first week I bought I spend all of his money, he give me two hundred dollars, and that's pretty much how it continued. He would give me two thousand, pay me two hundred, so I figured I was on a ten percent, whatever he give me, cause he would sit there and act like he'd figure it out. You know, you bought this much blood root, this much gold hosh, this much this, this much that. So, you know, he he. He done me right. I'm not complaining about that. You know, as far as paying me. Set of three over there. And stuff like that. He did, no, do me correctly. But here's where the shit went south. Uh, Harlan County has a problem of out-of-season digging. There's no one here to enforce it. Enforce it. Nobody. If the state would daggum grant me the power to enforce it, I would do it. But they won't. Uh, it's enforced. A lot of people think through fish and wildlife. Uh, the Department of Agriculture is over the ginseng. The Department of Agriculture doesn't have officers. They do rely on fish and wildlife for help. But fish and wildlife isn't in the mountains looking 
for poachers in the spring. There's a pretty three prong we can get, you know, and it is what it is. And then I even know some of the buyers that buy it for five, six dollars an ounce out of season, which is nothing. I don't know why anybody would sell an ounce of ginseng for five dollars. It blows my mind, but they do. And then that person sitting there for 30, 40 pounds or more when season opens. But anyway, back to what I was talking about, my vision. Well, Black Mountain Roots was doing good. We was expanding. He was having to pick up more often. Well, once my dealer base got going, or uh, my digger base, I guess you could say, got going, uh... I'm going to finish this, and then I'll dig that out. He wanted me to buy ginseng. I didn't want to do that. Well, I went back, was buying everything normally, cohosh, bloodroot, bark, because this was May, going into June. He was already asking me to buy ginseng. I said, no. Won't do it. Well, he calls me up. I got right under $200. He calls me up and he says, I had to cut you off on everything. I said, cut me off on everything. He said, yeah, our orders is filled. He said, but you can buy that ginseng. I thought, oh, that's how you're going to play me. Well, I waited a few days. I called him up. I said, I'm ready to bring your roots down. He said, oh, you going to bring them to me? I said, yeah, I'm going to come to Middlesbrough to you. Well, I loaded my car up, went down there. Getting everything out of the car. And no sign. He says, I thought you was buying sane. I cut you off of everything. I said, no, you closed me. I said, I'm not buying ginseng out of season. I said, this is my first year as a buyer. I said, I want a good name in this business. I said, I have a good name as a digger. I said, I, am. I, said, I know I'm in the top 100 diggers of the state. And I said, probably the top 50 in the state. I said, now, I know I have a good name as a harvester. I said, I do not want a tarnished name as a buyer. I said, this is what I want to do. I'm tired of digging. I want to retire and buy it and then resell it. He says, well, you take that money you got there, and you go on back to Kentucky, and he says, uh, what well, you got there? And like I said, it was under 200 bucks. Uh, he counted it. He said, you buy that and sign. And he said, I'll pay you when you bring the sign back when you spend the money. Well, I already know it was $200 he was going to give me. So, on the way home, I told my wife I was keeping it and that I wouldn't be buying any more roots from him. That man hounded me and hounded me and hounded me. And my wife finally gave him that money back. And he never paid me for buying. So it is what it is. He ended up getting caught doing what he was doing. He was saving these certified tags somehow and buying ginseng out of season and saying it was last year certified. Somehow he was saving his tags from the year before. I don't know. But easy to find out. You can Google it. Middlesboro man busted for buying ginseng out of season. You'll find him. Yeah, I guarantee it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Help me beat that algorithm. I appreciate all my viewers.